right, welcome back to part two of Tim Buyer's Home Tactics that will work for you today. So let's just jump right in. Now, you need to be able to sense desperation or motivation. Now, it's important to note that a lot of sellers just are not going to come out there and say, all right, here's my asking price, but uh, if you just offer me a price within 10% of that, it's yours. And by the way, if you want me to throw in some closing costs for you too, I'll go ahead and take care of that. Ah. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. That's just a fantasy world and just all realistic. If it ever does, please call me. So having said that, when we say sense desperation or motivation, and especially if the seller is present at the home, there are behavioral traits or there are things that people will put a vibe off into the air that you can actually watch. Now, a good trusted real estate advisor will be able to sense this even if the seller is trying to hide it. We'll be able to pick up on that, sense that, and report it back to you. Obviously not right there at the home when the seller's still there. Awkward. But outside when we get private, in the car, whatever. Now how will this benefit you? That's when your trusted real estate advisor will pull you aside and say, so I did pick up on a few things such as they did mention that this is a job relocation and they are moving out of state. So guess what? They gotta sell this house regardless. And they also made the comment that they hope to use the equity from this home to buy their new home in the other state that they're moving to. Now they're not just gonna accept any offer that you throw at them, but they are gonna be more open-minded. They are gonna be more willing to wheel and deal some because Bottom line is they want to get this house sold before they move because the longer that they keep this home and especially when it's vacant, the more money it costs to keep it in show condition. They're gonna have to pay for the maintenance, the utilities, the mortgage, the insurance, all of that stuff still has to be show ready while they're living their other life in another state. So they are gonna be willing to wheel and deal. Goes back to getting the best price of a home or the best term of a home, or ideally, both. And this is when it comes back to the importance of knowing why you are buying your home. And what factors in the contract are most significant for you moving forward? The seventh tactic here is compassion. Now you're probably thinking, how does this work? D, how does compassion fit into negotiations? It's really interesting and I'm gonna lay it down for you pretty quick, so if you do have any questions, please just go ahead and put them in the comments. Because this is what I have learned from working with both buyers and sellers. So it is very easy for me to get to that point of who knows how to negotiate and who doesn't. So the people who think it's all about them in the negotiations, well, they're the amateurs. They're very weak negotiators. They will shut themselves down. They're gonna have the most difficult time getting things through. And then they're gonna turn it and say, nobody wanted to work with me. And when in reality, they were just too freaking hard to work with. So yeah, nobody did want to work with them because they're paying the ass. So let's just call a spade a spade because that's what it is. Negotiation is give and take. It's about what I said earlier in this video. The devil is in the details with terms. Now I have worked with some buyers who needed their closing costs paid for in a seller's market. That's unheard of. How do we pull this off? It's because we found out what was most important to the seller. Oftentimes, price is just one aspect of the equation, but those terms, they can count for so much more. Do they want a fast closing? Do they want a shortened contingency time frame? Or would they be open-minded to paying the closing costs if we went above and beyond the asking price by set amount of our closing cost? And both buyer and seller are happy with that situation with the understanding before getting that dotted line signature, the seller will need to reduce the appraised value if for some reason it does not work. Now, a lot of people that I have worked with will roll the dice on that. And they quickly realize, hey, I'm getting everything that I, I can get out of this market. Not only am I getting my price, I'm getting offered more than my list. But the one thing they do have to be prepared for is they're gonna have to pay for the buyer's closing costs, even if the appraisal does not come in at the amount. 
Now, by providing a strong comparative market analysis from your buyer's agent to the seller in the form through their agent, and what can happen there is it can have peace of mind and comfort to everybody. If the, if the buyer's agent sees that that property is worth that ballpark figure, and I'm talking pretty close ballpark here, we're talking within $500 to $1,000, that the property could appraise at the high end, and it has comparables to truly support that, then let's roll the dice and let's see what happens. When the actual appraiser goes in and does the exact same thing that we've already done, that when it came to negotiations, we weren't looking for reasons, we came to what was most important is for somebody else to help you get what you want. And more than likely, if your motivations are to get into that house and you do need down payment assistance or closing costs and there's no cash in the bank right now, how are we gonna do that? Well, this is a position where a lot of Americans find themselves in. We have to be smart, we have to be cunning, and we have to be compassionate. We have to be compassionate towards the other people starting off negotiations on a good term. Because that is far better than going there and everybody hates each other. Trust me. Now we do understand that everybody is gonna have a bad day sometimes, so you, you give a little, okay, this is one of those days. But it's all in the approach and it's all about how you finish. If we keep an open mind, we are compassionate and we're respectful to the other party, and we try to put together some terms that are both amiable for the buyer and the seller, that's a winning strategy. And that's the difference between a skilled negotiator and an amateur no negotiator when it comes to strategy. It's not always about the best price, but it is about getting the best terms. And let's just face it, people always fixate on the cost. They never look at the terms. And after all, a price is just a price, but the terms, and that defines everything. Because consider, what would happen if you offered full sales price, let's just say $500,000, so you offered $500,000, but you also wanted your closing cost. Reality, you just shorted that seller because that 3% is money and that money still has to be paid for and that seller agreed to pay for it. Therefore, it's coming out of the proceeds of the home. So you just got that home for 3% less because the effect is the money still has to be paid for for the buyer's closing cost. So this is something to be real about and to be honest about. I just want you to think about this as you move forward in learning more about negotiations. The eighth tactic now is simply be professional. Treat people with respect and dignity that they want to be treated with. At the end of the day, that's where professional comes into play and give people that respect and dignity and that leeway that they are looking for. And you'll find yourself setting yourself up for an extremely great negotiation. The ninth tactic is stay calm. If you keep calm and cool and collected in the negotiation process, you're always going to be thinking logically. And I, I know your emotions do what they're going to bubble up. They're going to, I've seen a lot, both ways. Happy, sad, I've seen them. And I do know your emotions are going to be like a roller coaster through this stage. Red in the face, what do you think you're doing? Bitten when you're talking, I, I, I get it. What do you wanna do with your life? I get it, trust me, I feel the same way at some times, and I'm the person who's in the game guiding you through it. While you're going through that, trust me, I'm over here racking my brain out. Yeah, I've gotta get this done, I've gotta get this for them, I've gotta, this has to get done, and so what I do is I just sit back and, oh, much better. So now I can keep my eye on what's the most important for my client and not fall into the pitfalls. Moving forward, not losing sight of the end goal where emotions can ruin something rather than enhancing this experience. Being calm and cool and collected, taking that deep breath, you're freaking out no matter what you're doing in life, just and you're happy and your life is gonna move on. So let's move on to the 10th and final tactic, which is just have fun while you're doing this. Remember, you're buying your home. This is gonna be a fun, fun experience, okay? I take the bunt, I take the grunt. That's what your trusted real estate advisor does that for you, to make this seamless, painless for you. Have fun. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found some of the tactics and some of the skills 
helpful and you can use those as you do this for your home purchase. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. All my information is down below. Until next time, you take care.